Good evening. Good evening. Good afternoon. Welcome to our uh, worship service. It's always a joy. A joy to be uh, in the presence of our Lord, in the presence of His people today. I'd like to uh, remind those uh, who need the uh, to benefit from our uh, translation services, that we have translation devices available. So uh, if you don't have one, if you need one, I think they're over there. For a call to worship, let me read from Matthew 11, verses 28 to 29. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. I'd like to invite you to stand as we sing our opening hymn. Praise the Lord with the sound of trumpet. of the Lord Jesus Christ, as we gather in his presence today, he greets us with these words. To all of you who are loved by God and called to be saints, his people, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. As the Lord has greeted us, and I encourage one another to greet also your brother, your sister, Wave. There you go. And I extend to them all sorts of uh, signs of 
Greetings. Let's remain standing as we continue to worship the Lord our God. We will sing, shout to the Lord. Song. The next song is Holy is the Lord. And we stand and lift up our hands for the joy of the Lord is our strength. 
Vamos a levantarnos y vamos a levantar nuestras manos y vamos a cantar. invite you now to uh, this time of confession, again focusing our attention on our holy God, who called us his people to be holy, for he is holy. God's word assures us, if we say that we have no sin, 
we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us if we confess our sins he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness in humility and faith let us now confess our sin to God and observe a moment of silence as I invite each one to come to the Lord and confess his or her sins. Oh Lord, oh God, I'd like to thank you for reminding us to be mindful of our sins before your presence. Thank you for hearing our confession and for the assurance of your forgiveness. Amen. Brothers and sisters, hear now the assurance of God's forgiveness. When I kept silence, my body wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you. And I did not hide my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. And you forgave the guilt of my sin. Believe the good news of the gospel, brothers and sisters. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. And we usually say, and all of God's people say, thanks be to God. Amen. We're going to sing uh, the next song. It's in Spanish, uh, but we want to ask Katie to translate the meaning for the English-speaking people. Por favor. <laughs> Let me drink of your water, Lord, that I will not be thirsty anymore. Let me drink. I need more. I don't want to be thirsty anymore. Give me living water today to my being. Uh, come and fill me with your truth. Give me living water today in my being. I want to drink from your water of eternal life. Stand up. Let's see.
so many things to put away. <laughs> Turn your Bibles to First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians chapter one. Last Sunday, we welcomed new members to Bethel Church. We welcomed people who professed or reaffirmed their faith in Jesus as their Lord and Savior. We welcomed people whose lives have been forever changed by our loving God. Here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, we learn, we read part of the story of the Thessalonian believers, the Thessalonian church, whose lives also God forever changed. In fact, Team Paul, that's my full reference to Paul and his companions. But those are five words, four words. Team Paul, just two. The companions named in verse one, Silas and Timothy. So Team Paul recognized in the lives of Thess the Thessalonian believers these changes. And Team Paul thanked God for them. Look at verse two. We always thank God for all of you, all members of the Thessalonian church. And how did Paul, or how did Tim Paul, thank God for them? By mentioning them in their prayers, right? Isn't that a good reminder for us? to thank God for bringing changes in the lives of people here at Bethel. To thank God for His continuing work, for His blessings, for His guidance in the lives of people here. Can we continue to make that part of our culture? You know, when someone shares God's transforming story, or blessing in his or her life, that we will thank God and praise God and rejoice with these brothers and sisters. Let us continue to pray for one another. Indeed, let's continue to thank and praise God and rejoice with those who continue to experience God's transforming work, God's blessings in their lives. And what changes, what changes did Team Paul recognize or remember, that's the word used, and thank God for? Look at verse three. We continually remember before our God and Father. Why before our God and Father? Well, because Team Paul gives credit to whom credit is due. God's the one changing lives. Not Tim Paul. Not the pastors. God changes lives through the power of His Word, through the powerful work of His Holy Spirit. So, we continually remember before our God and Father, what? Your work produced by faith. This refers to the Thessalonian Christians' good deeds, good works, good actions that resolve, that reveal, that show their true faith in the Lord Jesus or their genuine relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Also, they remember before God the Father their labor prompted by love. This is not the same as work, okay? Because this word is not the same as the Greek word used to translate work. 
Okay? This is labor. Okay? And this points to the right things the Thessalonian believers say, think, and do in spite of their difficulties. In spite of the trials they experience. In spite of the challenges that confront this small church. And they continue to do this labor of love because of their love. Either their love for God or their love for the people or it could also be God's love for them that sustains them, that fuels them to continue to do say and think these right things in spite of their difficulties. Let me tell you that the Greek word used here to translate love is not phileo, brotherly love, not even eros, like romantic love. It's agape. The love that God showers the people the same kind of love that God deserves for people. The sacrificial love that desires another's good. They also remember the Thessalonian believers' endurance inspired by hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. And this points to the willingness of the Thessalonian believers to suffer in order to stay true or loyal to their faith in Jesus because of their hope in the Lord Jesus who promised to take them to be with himself he will come again that's something the Thessalonian believers believe Jesus second coming that their hope was in the Lord Jesus who has promised to be with them always. So what can we learn from these life changes God created in and revealed the true faith of the Thessalonian believers? Let me share two. First, reflecting on the Thessalonians' work produced by their faith. And then, second, let's consider together the two. Their labor of love and their endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's look at the first one. On their faith produced by their, on, on their work produced by their faith. Notice that Tim Paul did not give us specifics on this work produced by the Thessalonians' faith in the Lord Jesus. It could be any of the good works you could think about. It could be loving and caring for the needy, for the poor. It could be praying and comforting those who mourn or those who are sick. It could be attending Bible study groups or grow group meetings. But I would like to believe as we consider verses 6 through 10, that this could be the work of spreading the good news about Jesus. The work of telling others about Jesus and showing Jesus to others through the way they live each day. Look at how Tim Paul described the Thessalonian church's work of spreading the gospel of Jesus. Verse 6. Well, it starts with, in Paul describes, it starts with the Thessalonian believers becoming imitators of Tim Paul and of the Lord. In other words, the Thessalonian Christians put into practice the gospel of the Lord, the message of the Lord, which Tim Paul preached to them. So the Thessalonian church did not only talk the Lord's message, they walked, they put into practice 
the Lord's message they heard. And because of that, there's a good result. Look at verses 7 and 8. In verse 7, what happened? They became a model. Okay? Well, not really in terms of wearing designer clothes and displaying them before people. Okay? They become an example. Singular. You believe that? One church becoming a model, an example for all many of the churches. They become a model, they become an example to all the believers in Macedonia, in Achaia. The province of Macedonia, the province of Achaia, that's enough to cover the whole of Greece plus areas north of it. Look at verse 8. Not only did they become imitators, not only did they put into practice the Lord's message, and so they become a model, they become an example to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. Look at verse 8. According to Tim Paul, the Lord's message, you notice that? The Lord's message, not Tim Paul's message, not Pastor so and so's message, not Evangelist so and so's message. It's the Lord's message. It's the Lord's message that ran out from them. When I was looking at when I was looking at this sentence, I think the emphasis I think the emphasis is on from you. So I'd like to rearrange that sentence. I would translate this, this is my way, from you, the Lord's message rang out not only in Macedonia and Achaia, it's the Lord's message from you ringing out. And then next, your faith in God, your faith in God that reflects the Lord's message has become known everywhere. And because of that, the people everywhere, look at verse 9. They talk about how the Thessalonian believers welcome people and their message, the Lord's message. And they also talk about how they turn to God from idols. You know, that's the essence of Christianity. You know, Return, you, you, you turn from whatever non-Christian habits you have. You turn to God. So they turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God. God changes the lives of the Thessalonians not only for the purpose of worshiping Him, but also for the purpose of serving Him as God's instrument of changing the lives of many others, both believers in the Lord and those who have yet to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Pastor, Pastor, the good news about Jesus also went out from us, Encouraging people, comforting people, teaching people about God's amazing love for them. What do people around us hear about our faith in Jesus? Do people see and hear your work produced by your faith? Well, I hope and pray that they do. And that's how we serve the salt and light in this world. Next, we consider the next two. The Thessalonians, labor of love, and their endurance, inspired by their faith in the Lord Jesus. Well, these two, you can place under the first one. Work produced by faith. 
but these two you know, have a specific spin or emphasis. Both words, labor and endurance, point to the practice of faith in Jesus in times of difficulty, in times of trouble. In verse 6, verse 6, in verse 6 we learn that although the Thessalonians welcomed the Lord's message with joy given by the Holy Spirit, the message also brought severe suffering, severe affliction, other translations, to the Thessalonian believers as they were persecuted by both Jews and Gentiles. Yet, people commended the Thessalonian church for their willingness to stand firm in their faith and to love God and people during times of persecution. The Holy Spirit in their lives enabled them to stand firm, to love their persecutors, and to depend on the Lord whose promised return became their hope. It's faith in Jesus, brothers and sisters. Their dependence on Jesus alone for all things. The people heard everywhere and God used to change so many other lives. How is your faith in Jesus these days? You know, indeed, we live in unprecedented times where fears, worries, confusion, uncertainties, discouragement, even depression, you know, abound in the hearts of so many people. How is our faith holding up? Let me encourage you to continue trusting, depending, on God. It's a bad news. We do not know what our future holds for us. But the good news is we know those of us who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we know and we should know, we should not doubt. We know that our faithful and loving God holds our future. He's the one who promised to cause things, to make things work together for good. For the good of those who love him. Those who are called according to his purpose. And let's learn. Let's learn from God through the example of the Thessalonian believers. Whose lives God changed. Whose changed lives God used to change other lives. God is changing you and me. Purifying us from various kinds of imperfections. So that He can also use us to change the lives of so many others. So, we take this encouragement from the writer of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23 to heart. Let us hold unswervingly. Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we profess, we affirm, for He, God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who promised is faithful. Let's pray. O oh Lord our God, we thank you for your faithful work in each of our lives. We thank you for changing us and helping us to live for you. To love others the way you have loved us and to obey you. 
Forgive us for the many times we fail to show good examples to people around us. Help us, O Spirit of the Living God, to show and tell others the love of our Lord Jesus. In His precious name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor, for sermon, for teaching us, for giving us words of hope and life. Please stand up. Oh, vamos a. We're going to sing. We're going to respond with joy. Singing this song, God, my rock. church I'd like to uh, thank you for your continuing generosity and uh, support of um, the activities programs of our church and um, 
like to remind you that uh, we continue to accept uh, offerings, uh, tithes, uh, using um, our app so online. You can give. You can also mail your checks to uh, the church. And every Sunday, we always say to it that we uh, put out the uh, offering plate where you can put in your offerings, your tithes. And thank you for your support and generosity. I'd like also to mention that uh, we have made available the devotionals free of charge. All you have to do is look for the table where you can find them. It's over there as well. Okay? And grab one. We have our Today devotional and we also have the, uh, the one in uh, Spanish called Cada Dia. I translated that for you, Miguel. Good idea. Thank you. You should yeah, thank me later. Um, also, would like to uh, <clears throat> encourage you to continue to remember in your daily prayers. You know those requests, items that you find in the weekly uh, prayer, uh, in the weekly uh, bulletin, electronic bulletin that Katie usually sends. Okay. Um, you read uh, important announcements, but you can also read their uh, prayer requests, even praises. So I encourage you to be mindful of those requests, especially when you consider your daily prayers. <clears throat> right now, I would like to uh, call on uh, Elder Ernesto Garcia for uh, Additional announcement. Good evening. Council has given me the council has has given me the privilege of uh, expressing my uh, gratitude to Katie. And on behalf of Katie and Bethel Church, we want to express our express our gratitude and um, for the for la vida de Katie and she does all the all the work that she does here at Bethel. And um, my family and I are very grateful to Katie because uh, because. Um, as you might know, we, we've been, uh, uh, my family has been had a really hard time this year, and somehow Katie has always showed up at the right moment where we about to cry and we sad, and she has come up to our house and lifted us up. And uh, so the, I invite the church that the, to express the, the gratitude to Katie, and uh, if you guys, if you have any gifts for her or anything. Um, for Katie, uh, you, you are welcome to come to her and express your gratitude. I hope it's uh, okay. it's great gratitude for Katie because uh, we, we just love Katie. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
want to say thank you very much to all of you. This was not something that I had expected, um, but it has been a pleasure to be with you, especially in this time of pandemic where it's been so hard for everybody. We have all gone through difficult things um, in our faith. We've had to learn how to depend on God in new ways, and we've needed each other. We have needed each other's encouragement and love and prayers. And so for me, it's such a blessing to be able to be with you here in this place and to be able to share the love of God that he has given me, um, but also the love he's given you to come back to me. So thank you very much. Um, I'm, I'm very blessed to be with you. Did she say she was surprised? Yeah. I thought that's what I heard. <laughs> For the first time, Katie, we surprised him. <laughs> I'd like to go on a story training to lead us um, in these prayers for the people. like to express uh, uh, our, my and our family's gratitude to Katie and uh, uh, all of us here have been truly uh, uh, blessed by her. Let us pray. We are thankful for a God who spoke to the Thessalonians 2,000 years ago. To Paul, we are thankful that he speaks to us today. We pray for the new members. We ask that you guide them as they make decisions, as they testify, and as they testify to your goodness. We thank you, God, for his grace in our lives and the salvation found in Jesus. We ask that the elders, the deacons, the members of the church live to this and have this foremost on their lips. We pray for Christina Garcia's nephew, Hector Gomez, who had an accident and is uh, in a hospital in Bakersfield. Although he had successful surgery, we are uncertain of the outcome. We pray for his mom, Alexa, who is very worried. We pray for the family <laughs> and God's presence to give comfort in this difficult time. We pray for John and Carol Jacobson. We ask that you comfort her in this time of her life in the way that only you can. We pray for the family and friends of Maria Castillo, the mother of Sandra Pineda, who passed away recently in Guatemala. We pray for God's peace to surround them as they grieve. We know that families are often separated. We ask for Heavenly Father that you give them special peace at this difficult time for each family suffering grief. Please keep, we pray that Natalie Naharo is able to recover from her neurological disability. We pray for healing for her body. We pray for a full recovery of those lasting symptoms from COVID for many people. We ask that you keep Luden and Joanne Ross and their family <clears throat> and other family members who grieve the loss of Jim Young who recently passed away from COVID. We pray for the family, our Heavenly Father, and ask for your support in the, as they grieve this loss. <clears throat> we continue to pray for Gracie, ne Gracie Nicho, <clears throat> that she carry her unborn, unborn daughter to full term. 
We also pray um, for the individuals and family members and their caregivers who struggle with long-term health difficulties. Chris Andrea, Joseph Avia, Leet DeYoung, Bill DeYoung, Peter DeYoung, David Hernandez, Carol Jacobson, Cecilia Jimenez, Ken Clausen, Kate Glamers, Mr. Morales, Natalie, Marjorie Britannia, Miriam Valencia, and Carolyn Wong's mother. We pray, we, pray, we pray for a peaceful and just resolution to the conflicts around the world. We pray that God's will be done in each nation in a special way. We pray for people who are experiencing racial injustice. We pray that we may humbly seek God's justice, that we be able to show mercy and change those institutions or situations or economies as needed. We pray for the upcoming election. Pray that the people of God, pray that the people God has chosen will be elected and that his will will be done. We pray for the doctors and nurses who are fighting this virus. Pray Heavenly Father, we ask that you reach down, give them protection, give them help, give them encouragement, also to their families. We pray for the people who have lost livelihoods, loved ones who are under stress. We pray for God's encouragement and hope in the midst of their loss. We pray, our Heavenly Father, that each of us never move away from the blessings of God's saving grace in Jesus Christ. Lastly, we pray for those who, in their life, give service to this church, dutifully, willingly, and in the best spirit possible. Amen. Stone stand for the uh, closing blessing. Congregation of the Lord Jesus Christ, as you go from this place, we continue to serve and love the Lord, to grow, to serve as an example in your work of faith, labor of love, and endurance of hope. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you his peace. Amen.
Thank <laughs> you. 